What's going on, guys? This is Eric Johnson. And I'm RBM. And we have Bellator Showcase on ESPN Episode 1. The main event is going to be Todd Duffy and Tyler East. This is basically where we showcase all our guys who can't make it onto the shows because we have so many people on the roster. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Todd Duffy and Tyler East looks like a good fight. Nobody. I just don't understand why you just go on hiatus in the middle of a fucking championship title reign. I don't, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I need a break. <laughs> fucking, fucking Canadians always want a break. My hands are t- my hands hurt too much from knocking people out. Jocko versus the Joker. Yeah, that right uppercut made me tired. Anyway, and then of course we have another uh, we have another fucking uh, hiatus now in the light heavyweight division. So, oh, yeah, that's right. the, the number two contender is now on hiatus. I don't understand where all the hiatuses are coming from, but they are here, nonetheless. So. See. Dominic Mazada takes on Joe Taimonglo. I remember Toe. Toe. Yes, I remember that Toe guy. The Joe Taimonglo guy. You know, Toe. Toe, Toe. Yeah. Kate Jackson takes on Tanisha Richards. Boy T. Yamauchi? Yamachi? Takes on Mirzaev, the Black Tiger. People, we have a People don't make it onto the cards just because we can't pronounce their names. Yeah, I mean, uh, hey, how about this? The Tooth Fairy. Best nickname ever. We're about to get a lawsuit from Dwayne Johnson. I know. Zach Boucher. Trash. And just a preliminary tournament. Convenience. That's right. Here we go with a F- Bellator. I think this is a straw weight division fight. One girl will be getting her pro debut at 29 years old. The other one will be getting her 14th fight. Let's see what happens. Lily Rose wins her pro debut by unanimous decision in a great fight. And uh, is this part of the Grand Prix? I don't think it is. So first round, she had the takedown, controlled it. Again, controlled the round. And this time, no takedown attempts at all. She just kicked her really hard. One time. Nonetheless, that's a unanimous decision. Probably 29-28, right? Oh, okay, we got a 30-27, 30-27, and then 29-28. Interesting. She would like to fight Alexandra Albu. She's already calling out people. Got one win, she thinks she's Conor McGregor. And, and, apparently she's marketable because of the looks. Okay. I know. And we have wannabe hitman. <laughs> I remember him. And did we have him last fight? Oh yeah, Bellator two twenty. He lost. But it was a fantastic fight. Let's see. And it looks like he's gonna be fired very soon. It was also a great fight. I'm sorry, what? Round one, 248. One power punch is all it took. Guess he's just got a weak chin. 
And James Gallagher takes on Roman Zamansky. I believe Zamansky. <laughs> Fucking Bullock. Anyway, before this video gets taken down due to community standards. Oh, yeah, very sorry about that. I'm talking to him that it was actually my fault. I said, fucking Pollock. He's <laughs> very attractive. Who is? Uh, Roman. Is he attractive? I mean, from that picture, yeah. That nose is a bit, eh. And, and for today's episode, is RBM slightly gay? All right, here we go. Or all the way gay. What the hell? Oh. Oh, Zemanski, the sexy one, goes for the takedown. <laughs> Whoa. Gallagher grabbed a guillotine. Almost over. Jesus. I don't even know who to root for. The runner up for Final Frontier. And seems to be trying to loosen the guard and attempt to create a leg lock. Gallagher defended it. Zemanski looks for another leg lock. Gallagher keeps the guard tight. And another leg lock. Gallagher keeps the guard tight again. Just tight enough. Like a sweet ass. And it is round number one. And did the men, did the boys at the Berg Wrestling turn gay all of a sudden? More at six. We are back underway. Zemanski won the round. Gallagher comes forward, walking down Zemanski. Zemanski gets two left hands on the counter. You Polish son of a bitch. Gallagher comes forward to attack. Zemanski hits a counter left. Gallagher throws a one-two as he tried to make the third Reich on this bitch happen. Zemanski was equal to it, though. Quick exchange struck doesn't lead to anything. How fast till this video gets taken down for community standards violations? We will never know. Whoa. Gallagher steps into the pocket. Gallagher lands a left jab, finds nothing but air with a big right. Gallagher throws some strikes and a kick to the body, but Zemanski oh, defends him well. Oh, dang it. Gallagher 360! <laughs> I kicked your tummy. <laughs> Zemanski attempts to wrestle him. Zemanski doesn't get the takedown. Gallagher wrestles his way, controlling the grapple. Gallagher looking for a takedown. He can't get it. Very even round here. Gallagher attempts the leg sweep. But no. Zemanski dominant goes into wow, he gets a dominant position. Gallagher gets his way. What a wrestling match. No. Zemanski blocked it. Zemanski now takes control of the grapple. Two fighters step apart. Gallagher moves into the pocket. Left jab. And Zemanski avoids the big right. There's a right cross from Gallagher. Attacking with intent. Gallagher scores with three out of a flurry of five punches. Hits Zemanski with a beautiful right uppercut. Falls to the floor with a second remaining, and that is the end of the second. Talk about saved by the bell. Zemanski got knocked down. Let's see what happens in this third and final round before the preliminary tournament. Gallagher hits a left jab, hits a body kick. Nice, Gallagher, superb movement. Nothing really happening. Yep. Quick jab, quick left jab, right cross. There you go. Gallagher comes forward, and the two fighters start trading. <laughs> Blows. Zemanski <laughs> throws a counter left, does not connect. 
Combo that ends with a kick leg. A kick to the legs fails to land for Gallagher. Nice straight right that lands hard. <laughs> hard. By Gallagher. <laughs> like, leave us. Like, it said it landed hard. <laughs> what do you know about butthead? Jab hits home from Gallagher and he scores with a right cross that landed hard. There you go. <laughs> hard. Gallagher comes forward, steps into the pocket, avoiding a jab on the way. Gallagher connects with a jab. Zemanski evades the big right. Again. Nothing really happening here this round, actually. Gallagher getting tired. That's it. I mean, Gallagher just hit Zemanski a few times. That's pretty much it. Flurry of four quick punches, landing two out of four, and Zemanski avoids the big right at the end. That's it. I mean, Zemanski really didn't have any offense. Not really sure. I'm not really sure how they're going to score this fucking fight. Look like it looks like Gallagher should win this by decision. Yeah. Probably split. I say one of the judges says Zemanski won the fight somehow. Let's see. Nope. All of them get 29-28. And James the Strab Animal. The Strabinal. Or Strabinimal. How do you even say that? Is the winner by unanimous decision. Pretty good fight. Was this part of the... Like the early... The preliminary one-night tournament? No. Natural charisma shine as he got his 10th win of his career. The half black attack. That's awesome. What's this for? The lightweight division? It might be the bantam weight. That's lightweight. Huh. Yep. This is the tournament right here. Lightweight tournament. Here we go. <sighs> Nothing happening. Davis already getting instructions. Oh, misses. Vin misses with a vicious right hand. Ouch. Neither fighter lands a significant strike. No, no leg kick connecting. Davis's head movement's far too good. Davis steps forward and a striking exchange begins. Smith misses with a left hand. Davis throws a two punch combo. Okay, so no strikes have been landing so far. Pretty even. Smith's off target with a left jab, connects with a right hand. There you go. One, two by Davis. Again, nothing really happening. There's really nothing to comment on other than. Let's get through some more of these fights because there's like 10 fights, 20 fights total on this card alone. Yeah. And we have a TKO in the 59 seconds of the second round by Alfie Davis. He will move on to the second round. Jacob Kowalkowicz. Something like that. Takes on Gabriel Green. 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 <clears throat> Green. <sighs> Green. And let's see what happens here. Another Polish guy. I mean, you must love these Polish guys. And Gabriel Green defeats Jakub Kowalkowicz by submission. All right. That's two pull locks down and another video down to go. <laughs> and let's see. Tim the Experiment Wild. 
takes on the Lion, Carlos Miranda. Tim Wilde beats Carlos Miranda. Correct, yes. And now we got, I believe, the last one, the last first round matchup is Tiago Santos taking on Luca Elchich. Tiago Santos, Dos Santos wins in a unanimous decision. Let's go to the second round. We have Alfie Davis and Gabriel Green. Alfie Davis goes on to, I believe it's the final round. Yeah, I think so. And it's Tim Wilde and Tiago Dos Santos. Tiago Dos Santos goes to the final round. Yep. The final round. Here we go. Los Santos already got cut. Oh boy. Is this nickname Trader? Not Trader. Davis hit the jab, does not connect to the right roundhouse kick to the body. <laughs> They're so tired. <laughs> so exhausted. I mean, I mean, imagine being Tiago Santos. He just had another fight, and now he has to fight right away. Yeah, but they're both exhausted. Mm -hmm. uh, Santos tries to complete a takedown. Davis blocked any attempt to move him. There we go. Davis has to pull guard. Davis is looking ragged. Oh, shit. Butterfly guard. The, the, what the hell's a butterfly guard? Uh-oh, Dos Santos looks to get an arm from the bottom. Davis says, fuck you, motherfucker. Clock runs down. And the round is coming quick. Referee Herb Dean says this is bullshit and stands him back up. Oh, Santos looks utterly exhausted. He has absolutely nothing in the tank. Davis Don is a right hand. God damn, this is fucking boring. Boring finals fight. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a one night tournament. Cutman's going to work on Dos Santos. You know, I thought they would have, I thought they would have stopped the fight earlier, huh? Dos Santos dodges a right hand counterattack for the left jab and a right cross that misses. Davis just looks very, very tired. And they fall into the sloppy clinch. And the Soldado Santos tries to complete a takedown. It is, it is completed. Davis is on his back and pulls guard. At this point, one of them is just going to fall asleep. Who? I'm going to guess Dos Santos is just going to fall asleep on top of Davis. <laughs> I thought you said you were, and then all of a sudden you said, yeah, the fucking fight's going to just fall asleep on top of the guy. <laughs> yeah, it could happen. Davis gets separation, tries to scramble. Side control by Dos Santos. 
Here goes the knee bar. Davis fights off a knee bar. The champagne super knee bar. By no Amdor. I mean, Tiago Dos Santos. Right. Time runs out. Here we go, third and final round. Los Santos lands a left jab, does not connect with a right hand. Los Santos hits the left cross combo. Quick left straight right combination by Davis, there you go. Davis has a large gash on his forehead now. Both fighters are bleeding. They want a shot at the main card. Ric Flair's in the crowd going, woo, 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 in the crowd right with that, now. With that one woo, Ric Flair has been busted open himself. <laughs> one woo, busted open Ric Flair. Fuck. <laughs> I swear to God, if you put Ric Flair in a Diva's pillow fight, he'll find a way to get busted open. By God Almighty, what a deadly blow by that soft pillow. By God. <laughs> Ric Flair's bleeding like a red right mule. Ric Flair would be the worst person to have in a first blood match. Just, you just have to slightly blow on him. Like, like, like shoot a puff of, of air towards him and he, and he has his face. You know, there's a fun drinking game you can play as uh is a uh, watching well, you like there's a compilation of Ric Flair matches in the uh, early 2000s WWE and every time he bleeds you take a shot. Uh what else is there? It's funny. Um every time he says woo. Oh, every time he says woo in a ring, take a shot. That's a fun one. Every time he just flops on the ground. Oh yeah, when he does a little flop on the ground shit. Take a shot. Uh, what else is there? It's fun to do. Um, in a tag match, if he's like fucking dead for longer than five minutes, take a shot. On the outside, that's also a, a fucking thing he does. And yes, every time he bleeds. Hard way. It has to be hard way. Take a shot. There's a certain way to tell if it's hard way or not. You know why we're talking about something else? Because this fight is nothing happening! Just two people falling asleep. Two people just hugging each other. Oh, come here, man. I love you. No. I love you more. No. I love you more. No. Come here. Oh, Santos drops down, wraps his arms around his opponent's legs. Doesn't get it. Davis is just still stuck against the cage, however. And Los uh, Santos gets that final takedown before the bell. Which probably could help him with the judging. I don't know. Let's see who they give it to. Yep, it's looking like Dos Santos won. All three judges give a 29 28 to Tiago Trator Dos Santos. He wins the tournament. How is it? I don't I thought it was shit. Wants to make this a springboard to future success. Well, it could, because you're getting a main card fight. Against two? I have no idea. But we'll find out. Who are going to fight Vitaly Minikov in a catchweight fight? So, bitch. Here we go with the first main card fight. I am not interested in this. What was that? Whoa, fantastic. What happened? Wow, that's crazy. A fantastic fight, and we missed it. Yeah, it's okay. Good job to Mihail Nika from Italy. Brandon Davis takes on Kenny the Tooth Fairy Foster. See what happens here. Brandon Davis now is eleven and nine. And the two fairy 
now 13 and 16. Ouch. He is visibly delighted that he's going to celebrate his Bellator career with a win. And we have Micah Miller taking on James Intensity Terry. Very intense 40-year-old. And not surprised Micah Miller wins by unanimous. Wow, James Terry didn't retire. Goiti Yamachi, Yama, Yamach, Yamach something, takes on Mirzaev. Fucking Russian. A black tiger. Black tiger wins, by God almighty. He is now 21 and 2. Oh, yeah, bless you. And he gets a Bellator debut victory. Kate Jackson takes on Tanish Richards. Take a look at their rankings real quick. She is a season 23 member of the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, do you remember her? I certainly don't. Kate Jackson. She's apparently fought for us before. I don't remember her at all. She hasn't. We haven't booked her in a fight since November 2019. This will be... Yes. Yes. She will be taking on Tanish Richards, who will be making her fight debut for Bellator. She's also the number 14 women's flyweight in our division, so we will see how that does. Um, she's only 2-0 and in which she fought at EFC and won both her fights within the first and second round. So let's see how she does. Denise Richards is still undefeated in a poor fight. Went the distance in a unanimous decision. She wants to fight Bruna Ellen. Okay. Interesting. All right. I mean, not with a fight like that. Because apparently it was shit. Joe Taimonglu goes up against Dominic the Honey... Oh, the Honey Badger from New Kensington. Approximately... 45 minutes away from my house. Wanna watch this fight, man? All right, come on, you honey badger son of a bitch. Let's go. He's the slight favorite, as they're both in the negative betting line, which means they're both good, or both even, sort of. Mazzana is left off balance, so... Two and lands one of three quick punches, scores with the right cross. Mazada hits two left hands on the counter. Oh, shit. Time Mongo is just outboxing him. Not good for Mazada. Come on, Mazada. Come on, Honey Badger. You know, I like how all of our favorite local fighters are uh, animals. You got the brown bear. I got the honey badger and the other guy, light heavyweight. I think Linton Vassell. I don't remember what his is. but I don't even think he has a nickname. So he's from State College, PA. We don't talk about that. Fuck Penn State. Tomongo lands a vicious right cross. Mazzotta is about to get knocked out. Oh. Scramble. Taimongo being on his back, pulling half guard. There you go. That's it. Taimongo 10 9. Taimongo comes in. God damn it. Hits Mazzotta with a beauty of a straight right. We need Mazzotta to get in with some fucking offense, please. I'm just gonna leave you to your devices. What's that? I'm just gonna leave you to your devices right here. Oh. 
You're gonna leave me to the devices? I'm just gonna let you. I'm just gonna let you. I guess appreciate this moment. Why? I don't know. Maybe seeing somebody uh, representing your area get lose lose horribly. It's just like your guy. Hey, look, you put up a good fight. This guy is just getting his ass whooped. There you go. Uh, wait. He said, oh, yeah. Tai Mongo's hopping on the other foot. There you go. Takedown attempt with a trip. He got it. Side control. And that's it. Again. Motherfucker, man. You need to do this earlier in the round, you son of a bitch. Let me see. You have no attributes. He's yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Good at takedowns. Decent boxing. Kicking's not that great. His wrestling is trash. <laughs> um, good ground technique and ground control, though. It's one thing we can give him credit for. Let's see what Joe Taimonglo has to give us. Seven and six in Bellator. Not very good. Well, neither is one and three. I know. What did I want to look at? Skills? Skills. No attributes either, or background. Just perfectly average. He's just an average guy. Nope. We're not going to see anybody getting knocked down anytime soon. It's another time on the round, apparently. Uh, it's a right hand. Yep, there it is again. He's just getting fucking his ass whooped. Masada going in. Time on on one leg. There you go. There it is. Scrambling. Mazada is now on his back pulling guard. Fuck. Son of a bitch. That's a unanimous fucking 30-27, isn't it? Who knows, we might see a screw job. A 30-26? Damn. Oh my god, dude. That one judge told Mazada, fuck you, you're getting eight this round. <laughs> fuck you. Here's your eight, you son of a bitch. I got it good, apparently. He wants to fight Brian Boland. Whoever the hell that guy is. We got Daria Ibragamova They're gonna Alexis Sneaky Zebra Dufresne. I believe these girls are high-ranked fighters in the uh, featherweight division. Number 11, and also number 11 featherweight in the world for the women. We'll be taking on Alexis Dufresne, who is the number 6 featherweight in the world. This should be an interesting bout. Alexis Dufresne is the favorite. World caliber, blah, 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 world caliber jiu-jitsu fighter. And she is also a black belt in what she does. So. Oh. Uh, let's see what she is. Nothing and nothing. Very good boxing power, though. That's something we're going to be able to look forward to. And very good ground striking. Takedowns is okay, but has really good takedown defense. Um, marketability is excellent. So let's see how it, where this fight. What about Alexis Dufresne's marketability? Above average. So if I wanted to have a person win, I want Daria. But let's see what happens. 
Skip to end or watch the fight. Uh, up to you. Two punch combo and a quick left, straight, right combo there by Dufresne. He, oh, shit. I pressed space bar a little too much, but I think uh, Daria there hit a nice right hook. Yep. Dufresne then connects with a left. And then, he, oh my goodness, Daria hits a massive right hook to the jaw. Dufresne falls already in about 37 seconds. And Daria could not get the job done. She gets to try and get the Kimura. Dufresne blocked it. Remember, Mandaria is an excellent ground striker. So, we can even see a knockout on the ground here. Can't secure side control. Dufresne's going to scramble. Oh, Daria lost in the scramble. So far, they're in a stalemate on the ground. That's it. The judges give it to Daria. Round two. Two fighters start to engage. Daria falls for the clever feint. Yeah, Dufresne. Dufresne connects with a left hand. Or, so some people would call her Dufresne. <laughs> oh, powerful right hook by Daria. And it's a knockout. Dufresne straight up just gets knocked the fuck out and standing. And Daria wins by victory by way of knockout. One... Fucking uh, that one punch right there was all it took, or several. Is what I meant to say. Three power punches. Boom, boom, boom. Or sorry, no, that's it. Just one punch. That's all it took in that second round. Just waited for a perfect opportunity, and then wham. Let's see what she has to say. The interview itself wasn't that great. She is photogenic, so. That just being on camera boosts her profile. So there you go. So they're saying she's gorgeous. Yes. Platinum Mike Perry comes to take on Yaroslav Dynamo Amosov. He was a champion somewhere. I don't know. It's, uh... Last time we saw Mike Perry, he got flagged. Did he? By, like, oh, yeah, he did. Like Paul Bailey or something? Yes, he did. Got flattened in a minute 54. He beat Michael Chiesa and lost to Damian Maya. Then he beat Ray Cooper the third, and then lost two fights in a row after that to some high profile opponents we have. So yep. Mike Perry is a is a devastating striker with dynamite fists and knees. A consummate trash talker, Perry is known for antagonizing his opponent at weigh-ins. He is a troll, and he's very antagonistic. Let's see, his opponent. Just normal. Just a normal guy. Nothing too great about it. Scores with a great right hook. And Amosov staggers backwards after that right hook. And there's a submission attempt there by Perry, a standing guillotine. And, this, and Amosov had to tap out right there. That was pretty quick. Platinum Mike Perry wins by a standing guillotine. In 349. Yep. He wants to fight Carlos Condit. Well, dang. Okay. You just you just might get it. He would guarantee wait, he would guarantee to win in under five minutes. Oh look, man. look man. He got flattened by Paul Bailey. What makes you think he can beat Carlos Condit in less than five minutes? 
him and Carlos Condit. He wants a piece of Carlos Condit. And I think we might just give it to him. I'm not really interested in this fight. And Jack Hermanson in 37 seconds of the whole fight. <laughs> I'm a knockout. Yes, let's see what the fuck happened. Let's see the whole sequence. Let's see. Hermanson goes to the legs with a low kick. Jocko scores with a jab, finds his left cross blocked. Jocko then hits the right hand. Hermanson just lands a powerful right hook out of nowhere, and it's all over. Well, just. We know, that, well, we know that Hermanson has great power, or Jocko just has horrible chin strength. Let's look at the stats. Let's look at the skills. Boxing power is very strong. His chin's also very strong, so. All right, now let's take a look at Jocko. His chin's actually not that bad. Kind of surprised he he fell that quick, huh? I guess he just had, I guess Hermanson just has that much power. Yeah. Pretty good co-main event. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is that his power, his punch power, is one of his main weapons. I can see that. I got you your 20th victory in your career. Good stuff. And it's time for the main event of the evening. The Irish car bomb, Todd Duffy, goes head-to-head -head with Tyler the Beast East. Tyler East is a rising star. He's won almost every single Bellator fight so far. He lost to Rampage, his first fight in round. But ever since, he's been okay. He's, ta he's taken all his fights to unanimous decision. We're going to see if he can do something else. Uh, Duffy is a uh, good. I mean, isn't he always a uh, fucking undersized dude? And every everyone, every fight we put him in, and he just fucking just whoops him. It's kind of funny. I think so. Here we go. Duffy's gonna be the confident one. They're both wrestlers. Oh, right cross that landed hard. Nice straight right from Duffy. Duffy's already owning him. East looked like he was going to step in and grapple. Duffy took initiative. Duffy connects with a nice jab, then scores at a right cross. East is just getting outclassed. East moves in fast and clenches with Duffy. There you go. He's going to push Duffy up against the cage. Duffy doesn't let himself be driven back. Gains a dominant position instead. Oh, shit. Duffy's going to try to do it. That the, that the weight advantage Duffy has is definitely is what is factoring into him in his dominance. Over um, yeah, I think that's what's going on right now. There's a quick elbow by Duffy. And that gave him a nice gash above the eye. Now remember, blood above the eye is probably the biggest pain in the ass to deal with in, a, uh, in an MMA fight, okay? Because that blood trickles down to your eyes. And it burns really bad. It's kind of like sweat, but a tad bit worse. Duffy pins East up against the cage and hits a couple of nice right hands to the side of the head. Duffy's going to get that Muay Thai clinch, and he does. Uh oh Let's see what happens under a minute. Duffy misses the knee strike, maintains control. And a knee to the chest, but bad angle, not much power. East, is def East defended against it very well. He only allowed one shitty knee strike. Or two shitty knee strikes. Duffy 
I believe the cut man goes to work between rooms to patch up East. And East already getting pelted with a strike. And another one. Back to back straight rights. And another big right hand from Duffy. Oh my god, this first minute just sees East getting outclassed. Yeah, but Duffy's starting to tire. Probably because he's been going too hard. And another crunching right hook. What a fucking chin by Tyler East. Oh shit, Duffy's already exhausted. East there, here we go. East with some good head movement. Oh, there it is. East is just taking punches. Duffy looks like he doesn't have a lot left to give. All of his fucking strikes are just whiffing. Yeah, East gets a hold of Duffy. He's going to try to get Duffy up against the cage. He does. Duffy looks like he's almost, almost out on his feet with exhaustion. See if East can take advantage. That's it. Nope. And it looks like it's another... Look, five power punches. Look at that. He's throwing nothing but power. He's like those fucking idiots on uh, EA Sports UFC 3. Just throws haymakers the whole fight. And then they complain whenever I fucking get him in a takedown and get a submission. Talking about you, Kevin. <laughs> fucking, it's all you do is throw haymakers. Pretty easy to defend. Here we go for the third round. East going in. He got it. There you go. This is it. Yeah, this is his chance. Right here. Uh oh, wait a minute. Duffy gets some separation. Scrambles. Side control. East has to try to get a submission here. Oh, some stiff elbows by Tyler East. And Duffy turns and gives up his back. East tried to get some hooks in for a rear naked. But can't. And another big right hand on Duffy's head. Oh, man, he's just... Very good ground strikes here by Tyler East. There we go. He's got both hooks in. That's it. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> Todd Duffy just got dominated in that third round. But... Now, that, could, that might be a draw. If that was like a 10-8 round, that could, be, that could make this a draw. I don't know. Duffy's ahead. Oh, that's right. It's the main event. It's not over yet. This is bad news for Todd Duffy. Very bad news. Now that East is uh, seeing every punch that's thrown at him because he's very tired, the speed of his strikes are not there. Here we go. Oh, man, look at this domination by East now. This is not, not good. What a good main event this is. First Todd Duffy controls it, now Tyler East. I know, right? But I like that, right? Like, the dude in the first two rounds gets dominated, then that guy comes back. You know what I mean? I like that shit. I don't know. Don't you? Kind of. I love that shit. It isn't a pretty tactic. East is wearing Duffy down by keeping him trapped. There you go. Hitting each other with short punches for about a minute again. Yamasaki should probably, uh, you know, should have done that earlier. Now East is starting to get tired, but hey, by the fourth round, that's pretty good. Especially if you're heavyweight. East is able to grab Duffy. East can't do it, and Duffy's now dominant. Duffy goes for the leg trip. Uh-oh. Duffy's got the top. And that's it. 
I'm not sure who they're going to give that one to. Ooh, we got a nice 28 punches. Probably. Yep. We are all tied. Let's see. 29, 28. That'd be you. Uh, everything's still to fight for. It's 38-38 right now in the scoring. Clinch by East. East is going again for the boring driving up against the cage with no takedown. Yep, there it is. He's just trying to wear him down. Another 30 seconds of nothing. There's a sharp stomp to the foot on Duffy. Back to the center. He shoots in for the takedown. He got it. Duffy has to pull half guard. That's it. Duffy just couldn't get anything done these past three rounds. And we go to the decision. I don't know who they're going to give this one to. Uh, it better be Tyler East. We got a 48-47, 48-47, and a 48-46. And Tyler the Beast East is winner by unanimous decision. And a good, pretty good fight. So, he did what he had to do. He did, it, he did it well with 22 fucking ground strikes. Power strikes. Jesus. I mean, from the third round on, you know that Tyler Reese is probably going to take the fight. He praises Todd Duffy for the tough fight. I bet you took how many punches to the jaw in those first two rounds? My God. You tough son of a bitch, Tyler East. I got a horrible commercial. But that was, this was a throwaway show. Thank God, right? We only got about 700 people. Six hundred. We gained, yeah. We don't gain popularity for uh, throwaway shows. You just get people with name. You just get people's name values up. That's all. We could have done a lesser show. But. Uh, we're probably going to take down these fight of the night bonuses just a little bit. I say we give the winner of the fight of the night bonus maybe $10,000. Knockout of the night maybe gets five grand. The rest of them are five grand. Since it's not like a main card show. We can probably just take out that two. There you go. Okay, now let's see. We still lost 61 grand, but thank God I took out the rest of those. Mike Perry's our highest paid. Thank God we're millionaires. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. I mean, that was a hell of a uh, hell of a card for uh, Tyler East. Um, the main goal of that was just to get people's. Uh, It should.
I'm sorry, what was that? There's no you can unlock Joe Rogan in the EA UFC 3 game. Oh, uh, Joe Rogan commentaries? Or Joe Rogan and uh, Mike Goldberg? No, like Joe Rogan the fighter. You can unlock Joe Rogan as a fighter. Oh, you can? Yep. I wonder what Joe Rogan has to say about himself in the game. Oh, you know, this Joe Rogan guy, he's really awesome. My favorite fighter. Really, Joe? Well, I'm just going to play as GSP, and I'm just going to, like, pick the worst welterweight. That's how I'm going to do it. No, what you do is you go to, like, knockout mode, instant death, and then, you know, do the... You know, I have a welterweight career. I'm just at the tail end of it in EA Sports UFC 3. I think I'm, like, 57 wins and, like, 15 losses. But, like, I only have, like, 3% uh, health left. So, like, I'm, like, down to, like, the fucking wire. I was the champ for, like, five years in that game. The welterweight champ. Then I went to middleweight. I'm fucked up in that. So now, are you on your downward spiral? Yes, I am. I've been losing, like, every fucking fight. As soon as you get old in that game, good luck trying to get out of it. That's all I gotta say. Fucking Conor McGregor's like 45, 46 years old, still going at it. You would think that like EA, you know, for being a AAA company, you would think they'd like have people retire and have new guys, like randomly generated AIs get uh, put in there, right? You would think. Yeah. But no, you know, like fucking GSP's like 53. <laughs> That's still going. <laughs> what the fuck? And they don't even... Fucking Tyron Woodley's like 44 or like 45 or something like that. Like, these people don't retire. I don't get it. I'm going to do a heavyweight career next. Dude, don't do a heavyweight career because you can't move up or down. Or you can't move down. What do you mean you can't move? Oh, yeah. Dude, it, dude I watched this one heavyweight career and the guy was like fighting CP and he only took 20 pounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing I hate about fucking the career mode. You have to... Oh, wait. Val, Valerie Latourna has completed her suspension. Fuck. Still gone forever. Fucking bitch. Anyway... Check out the rankings now. Tyler East now moves up to 13, and Todd Duffy just stays where he's at. Okay. Pretty nice 4-1 and one record there for Tyler East. I wonder what the lightweight situation is, because I bet the tournament went and must have skyrocketed. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, yeah, lightweight. He was at 18, and it moved him up to 15. Not that, not where I thought it was going to go. Oh, yeah, his first three fights in Bellator. Okay. All of them were unanimous decisions. And they were all good fights. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I say we give him his... Hmm, how long till he recuperates? Probably forever, right? I wouldn't blame him. Dude, I... 20 days. What the hell? This guy's a beast. His educated feet. He he did he, 
He did throw a lot of kicks, didn't he? So, who's AJ McKee going to fight next? Because Michael Chandler's opened up. Justin Gaethje's opened up. Tyson Griffin, Eddie Alvarez, Justin Henderson. I guess Gaethje. Any, any change in light heavyweight? Nope. Do we have a light heavyweight belt? No. I don't think so. Is there I, don't... I think there I saw another one. Which, yeah. We got Cameron Stearns moved up. Yep, Hermanson moves up to four. Oh, from ten. Whoa. Oh, by the way, we signed Israel out of Sanya. Yep, Israel out of Sanya is now a Bellator fighter. Look forward to that. Yeah, I know, right? UFC randomly cut him off camera. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? How long until he's done recuperating? 14 days. So who, who should and who should he fight? I don't know. Is Tyrone Woodley? Not Woodley. Uh, yeah, Ty is, yeah, Tyron Woodley. He is. Also in 14 days. We could do that. Yeah. Um, who do we have? Lavada. Oh my god, Lavada's going up against the number seven contender now. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Mike Perry's up to number nine. Yeah, yeah, Mike Perry was a good one there. There we go. He went up uh, three spots. Back into the top ten. Let's see. Lightweight. Yeah, we saw lightweight already. Uh, featherweight. Had Zemanski moved down. James Gallagher moved up to three spots. Bantamweight had Pasternak. Move up from 20. Wow. Oh, yeah, TJ Dillashaw's here. And Daria moved up. From a number 11. That was a huge move. Almost to the top five. Yeah. Well, it's flyway. We had Tanisha Richards move up from number 14. Two spots. And Kova moved down one spot. She moved up for absolutely nothing. <sighs> Bruna Allen's now top 10. That's right. Let's see. I'm going to say we should have a ton more fighters in this list now. We have 23, but a lot of them are still unranked. Let's see. Second episode of the ESPN show. Yeah, let's see. And I guess we could also book a pay per view. We have two. We have two world title matches. Well, three technically. Um. Now we're going to have a title fight. On the TV show, but we have two others open up now. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted to see how the... I uh, wanted to see how the name value worked. Like a charm. It went up 20%. Yeah. Please don't take too long. Three months in a week. God damn it. Takes him forever. Anyways, let's book some let's book some cards. Okay, let me see here. 
thought there was something else I wanted to do. Now I can't remember. December card. Whoops. I feel like I feel like we're missing a couple things. Anyway. Stick to California. Play it safe. We're looking at what kind of potential matchups we could do. Hmm. All right. Main event. So, I wonder what Duho Choi and uh, Han Archuleta would look like. Yeah. Decent main event. Okay, let's book that. Make sure that title's online. That'd probably be That'd be helpful. Strong, that'd be a strong main event then. Hey, that's your main event. Let's hope that it actually happens. AJ McKee versus um what's the the other guy's name? AJ McKee and Put the title on the line. Dude, AJ McKee has like no competition. You know what? I'm thinking about having AJ McKee try to be a double title holder. <laughs> uh, I guess the uh, winner of the tournament. He has like no competition. And remember, it's not like we're getting Justin Gaethje because he has a like, terrible momentum. He just came off a victory. Look, he's on a three-fight winning streak. He also lost, unfortunately, to Floyd Mayweather, but that's fine. So for the end of the year... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Alter show. That's not... Fucking hell, you can't, you can't alter the date. Nope. It's 244. Four. Oh, 244E, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Major show. No. Let's try that again. All right, make sure to put that for the title. I think that's a great idea. All right, do hope sure. Oh. For the title. Again, that'd probably be a good idea. That is our main event. Shit. Uh, that's 245, man. Why the fuck did it do that? You you canceled Bellator 244. That's the real 244, goddammit. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you'll fight him now? Show. 
You're a fucking dick. You know what? I'm going to book you in a fight against COVID-19. You take it then. Watch this like Dominic Cruz comes up with a cure for COVID-19. I didn't actually want him to win that. I punched him in his fucking face. <laughs> 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 We have a lot of hometown fighters. Ooh, yeah, Stefan Struve come back. Ain't that a bunch of shit? All right, so who, let's, let's rank it by popularity then. Him and Sergey, still best suited to the prelims. Best suited to the prelims. Oh my god. We could get Eddie on the show. This would be a main show fight, but not a main event. We can get Jay Lau and Benson Henderson. That'd be a main show fight. Sure, sure let's do it. That's two lightweight fights on the main card. Doug Lima would just kill him, but he's in a tournament. As a matter of fact, let me see this. Doug Lima would be good by then. Oh yeah, he's not in the tournament no more. No. We can have him do something. Sure, him and him and Ray Cooper. Or they already oh they already had a fight. Yep. This would be a last sixteen, guess what? We already went through the last sixteen. I don't know. We need Paul Pollack right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Him and Joey Davis would actually not be too bad. What? He does not have the experience to deal with that. Okay. I've never ever been told that before. Hmm. Fuck it. Ugly me doesn't get a fight then. Jordan Young would just beat the hell out of Haley Gracie. Best suited to the prelims. Why am I not surprised? They all fucking prelims. Yep. Sorry, bro. We don't have that many popular guys. What? I guess.
Really having a hard time trying to figure out what the fuck. Yeah. That's Cruz and Fuma would be a good one. Yeah, but that was going to headline the second episode of the showcase. Yeah, we could still do that. Or I guess I guess we don't have to. Sure, we'll just have this, that, the Bellator title fight. There we go. Him and Justin Lawrence looks like a great fight. All right. Perhaps just makes it on to the main show. There you go. All right, and then we'll have the Bellator title fight. Or not Bellator, the Bantamweight title fight. On another card. How about this one? I don't want to fight him. Yes, I will definitely fight this guy. For whatever reason. Sure. I hope Fuma kicks your ass. Okay. There's your co-main. Should be co-main, right? Yep. Okay, that works. All right. We should be like WWE. We have four main events tonight. What? All right. We are going to see you next time on Bellator MMA. All right. See you.